Okay, everyone, I think we're ready to begin. I'd like to welcome Sables President and CEO, Ruben Padilla. Hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, attending the webinar of Sables, our first webinar. So we will be here learning to do it with you. I hope everything goes okay. Uh, the main objective of this webinar is to give you a follow-up of the press releases that we have been putting about El Fierro, the new silver project that we have in the San Juan province. And also I will be, since we are now in this ongoing new private placement, I will be happy also to take some questions on that regard. So going to the San Juan El Fierro project, as uh, you, you are, are aware, we, this is a new project that we took at the beginning of this year. The Del, Del Fierro is an old mining district, silver mining district, it was partially mined on a small scale by, uh, by miners in San Juan, mining high silver veins, very high grade silver veins with some polymetallic uh, credits. The property really, as I mentioned, was never really mined in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a big scale. It was more small pits, small tunnels, but uh, very little. But never, the property has never seen any drilling or any modern exploration. So we were able to identify the target and now consolidate over, as, over more than the 6,000 hectares to cover, to cover all the area of interest. You can see a photo of one of these old tunnels that, that are in the property, very shallow, most of them. The property in this image you can see in orange is the province of San Juan. But by the way, San Juan was ranked by the Fraser Institute as uh, the second best jurisdiction in Latin America for exploration just after Chile. Uh, you can see in uh, the capital of San Juan right there, and the bottom show in, 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 the, in, the, in the yellow area, the capital. Iglesia is sorry, in orange is the, is the, is the county where the El Fierro is located, but also our property of Don Julio, the, you know about this property we have been exploring for two years, is 120 kilometers northeast of Don Julio. This image show you in yellow the 6,000 hectares that we have control in this moment. And two areas are Fierro Bajo on the right and Fierro Alto on the left. The both, those two areas are the one that has some historical small mining and where the veins basically we know they are outcropping and you can follow them for a few kilometers on the ground. So the first results that we presented was just to say that was a historical mine, but we went, we went here and did the first sampling that is the second press release that you saw a few weeks ago, where we proved with some samples that there were high grade values in El Fierro. For example, here's the Fierro Bajo, the one that was in the right of the, of the image that I just showed you. Uh, the first samples that we took here that we 100% proof the high grade values of these veins with vein values even higher than limit detection, uh, the upper limit detection of 10 kilos uh, silver per ton. In the sample, you can see the distribution of the initial, um, uh, initial uh, reconnaissance work that we did on the left. And on the right, you can see the type of material that we find in the veins that is, uh, as galena, we saw in this case a copper oxides, and the high grade silver values are very likely associated with, uh, with sulfur salts and probably with the galena, because uh, we don't see nat native silver, but this high grade silver value must be associated with the galena or sulfur salt, they look very alike sometimes to the fine grain galena. So this is Fierro Bajo, the first sampling that we did a follow up. Then we went back and we did more mapping in Fierro Bajo, just the property on the, the, the group of paints located on the left on the first map that I show you. At this scale, you can see the bar there is 500 meters. So the mapping here show that the first mapping that we are doing, we found an area of two kilometers by 500 meters with four veins that we can follow some of them after uh, to 1.5 kilometers. Uh, and 
we can see also the continuity, very good continuity along a strike, and then along a strike, they disappear in, uh, below the gravels. So very likely they continue for, for, for more distance. And that was the press release that we put to, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we published yesterday, with also great results that prove that three of these veins have values for all, uh, above a thousand uh, gram of silver per ton. Although what you see here is a silver equivalent, but the silver is still very high in these uh, in these veins. So we're very happy with this because just looking at this vein system here, at this two kilometer by 500 meter proof, the potential to be just by itself this place. If we have this kind of grace and or continuity, this can, this just area of or uh, Fierro Bajo could be a significant or silver ore deposit. But fortunately, the story doesn't finish here. Uh, okay, you can see, just let me show you a little bit of photos in the small pit that they did in the past. You can see the veins there, approximately two meters. Uh, this is the case of vein A. The vein A, we can follow that one for at least 1.5 kilometers, and I say it's open, I just mentioned it's open along a strike. One to three meter wide, and it's vertical, good mineability. And in this, Vein is where we got this uh, super high value of more than 10 kilo of, of silver per ton. Just by itself, again, this vein, 1.5 kilometer with this type of mineralization and thickness, it is, it can be by itself an ore deposit. Another example of another vein with more than a kilo silver that was just barely just touching the past without, by, the, by the old miners is the vein B. Just this photo I just to show you the type of mineralization that we are seeing. And the, on the right is on manganese oxides uh, and uh, in galena and in the, with some sphalerite. Then let's say, it's, I, I just mentioned it's good to have the Fierro Bajo, but the Fierro Alto is six kilometers to the west and on the right side of the first image that I show. So we knew there were some old workings there. We went, to take, we went there and took the first reconnaissance samplings in, uh, in uh, old workings. And as you can see, every sample that we took in the first round came with very good values in silver, but we have a good surprise here that we got gold values. You know, those, you see those ones, the six rounds, 6.2, 6 6.14 gram of gold. This is a surprise because in the past, the old miners never analyzed for gold. And there is a difference now between Fierro Alto and Fierro Bajo because we have gold here and we don't have gold in Fierro, in, in, in Fierro Bajo. So a lot of more to understand for us between those two systems. We went now back to Sierra, uh, Fierro Alto. We have uh, the results are coming. We have the mapping that we did and we are going to have a press release when we have all this data together on Fierro and Fierro Alto. So I wanna just for finish to put together a big picture again, the Fierro Bajo, like I say, by itself is a great, it could be an ore deposit with the potential, the site that this place has, the number of veins, the grape. The Fierro Alto, like as we are coming with a pre-release as soon as we get all the data together. Uh, we have gold here, and we have a lot of alteration, you can see in these images between those two areas. So we did also, we. We have some work that we did in the between those areas, the reconnaissance work. I think we are going to probably be able to find more mineralization between and around these areas. At the end of the day, we need to probably concentrate our exploration. What we can see is in this moment that is the veins in Fierro Alto and Fierro Bajo. We need to go then. We want to finish the mapping. We will do some IP, probably a, a ground map and prepare these properties for drilling, for, for drilling as soon as possible because uh, our very promising uh, targets, the veins are cropping, the great are cropping, so we are very confident that we, will put, we put the holes underneath those veins, very likely we're going to hit good mineralization. And, pro, and then in the middle, we are going to understand the real extension of the whole mineral system in this six kilometers area. So that's, that's uh, a good summary, I think, on this moment, what we understand of El Fierro. And we can pass to the questions. Everybody agrees here. Hi, Ruben. The first question we have is, do you see silver mineralization in the wall rock or between the veins? 
you know, there is no much outcropping between veins. You can see how the veins barely outcrop. And we can follow the veins. And in this moment, I can say the mineralization we have sampled is only along the veins. But oh, sorry, I'll go back to this. In some sample, in some sample that we have, we have seven meters are around the main vein. Yes, there is mineralization that we have been proved that seven meters outside, uh, like a mineralization halo around some of the veins. Okay, thank you. The other question I have uh, from a viewer is, when do you see drilling at El Fierro to begin? The drill permit is ongoing right now. We presented all the information to, to all the paperwork. San Juan, fortunately, is, a, is relatively fast and straightforward, the permitting process. So we are expecting to have this permit process ready by the end of December, for sure. We need to finish the geophysics and mapping. So I can see the drilling happening sometimes in between the mid-January and the beginning of January. Thank you. Okay, another question on El Fierro. Is there any reason why the grade should decrease with depths or should it be consistent in this deposit type? I do believe it's going to be consistent because we are dealing with mineralization that seems to be more higher temperature. It's not the typical epithermal uh, type of deposit that only have a vertical, uh, vertical limit on the boiling, uh, in the boiling zone. These are very sulfide-rich vein that looks more mesothermal. And normally these mesothermal structures, they don't have much vertical constraint. It is more about how, how deep can we mine this type of vein. So I expect to have good vertical continuity. Okay, so there's four kilometers between Alto and Bajo. Do you think you will find more undercover veins in that space? And will you use to, Sorry, go ahead. And sorry, and will you use geophysics there or just drill? There are six kilometers between the two, two vein systems. And yes, I think we're going to find more mineralization between them. We are, we just finished the string sediment survey between those two areas. That is the first approach. And then we also prospecting to find boulders of the of pieces of vein because basically unprospected. We can see color anomalies and clay anomalies in the aerophotos and in the satellite images. So very likely we find more zones. And because not everything is covered by gravel, it's partially covered and super cropping. I expect that we will find pieces, areas of cropping with mineralization. We go for the mapping and the sampling. And yes, we're going to follow up with your physics that will be MAC and IP. And, and on, on when we have that done, but only after we finish drilling Norte, uh, Alto and Bajo, where we are it's very clear targets of vein outcropping, we will jump into a more risky zone that is the connection between the two areas. Okay, another question. There are very, these are very, very high grades. What is another similar deposit that you could highlight? You know, we, we can, uh, we can go back probably to places like in Mexico, you know, like, like Chispas now, very high grade mineral system there, just to have something that is in the mind of people the recently, recent drilling, but very, very, very high grade veins. Uh, we have the veins of Resnillo in, uh, in, uh, in Mexico, in central Mexico, that also has a strong vertical component with base metals. And so I would say those are very two. We can go for a long list of comparison, but because they are very high grade and things that people can have in their mind easy will be the veins of Fresnillo or the veins of Las Chispas in, in Sonora, Mexico. Okay. A final question, I think, here. There is a lot of space in the tenement to the north of the sampled areas. Do you think there are chances for other parallel trends? You know, if we go to this photo here, I really think. You see all this clay, all this color here, it's a clay anomaly, completely unprospected. No, we just did string sediments and we will know soon. And we took some samples in the, the area that looked very attractive with good alteration. So we took few reconnaissance samples in that area. It's a big area, that's uh, like a two kilometer by two kilometers. It's an altered zone. 
So at least from hydrothermal alteration, we know that we have a hydrothermal alteration zone up there in the north. So if we get some grace out of this, will be a, a great news to we can follow all this 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 alteration zone in the north. Okay, great. Now, uh, a question more on uh, the company in general. It's, it's great that there are many irons in the fire. Could Sable provide an update for the timing of events for all projects? Yes, that's a good question because I agree we are a very unique company with a very unique portfolio of projects and, and, and tenements. Uh, we, I would say almost we are like a many companies in one company. Uh, and many opportunities, but at the same time, it's a challenge with all this iron in the fire. So in the case of Argentina, we, we you see why I want to concentrate in El Fierro right away, because the veins with high grade are sticking out, of, are out cropping, and the chances, and the footprints is big, and the chances, normal chances, just logic, the thing that we see, is that we have good success very quickly in El Fierro. So let's go and hit the hit El Fierro as soon as possible. We have, just to stay in Argentina, we have another uh, 50,000 hectares in the area of Don Julio, where we covered the core area of 25,000 hectares in the last two years, two and a half years, with amazing amount of mapping and sampling. And that thing can be a mineral district. We need to go there because it's a huge thing there. It's, that, that area has been proved to be uh, a, an area that needs a lot of work. We almost finished with everything in the target generation. We need to go back and finish an aerial mag survey, uh, then mix aerial mag with geochemistry, geology, and then those anomalies that we get, we are going to do IP and prepare targets for drilling. I'm really excited. I know because I'm talking about El Fierro, I'm losing the, my passion for Don Julio. Don Julio is a great, you know, when we went there and drilled, some people lost faith on us because we drilled one target that we stopped. Uh, but with the reason we did it is because we recognized that we, if we didn't finish the right work and the mapping and the sampling, we were wasting our money and wasting the money of our shareholder. So we went back, did all this mapping, and Don Julio will be ready at the right time, I suppose, soon to be ready with the targets for drilling. In Mexico, the land package is a challenge. We have the, one of the largest land package in the central Mexico on Silver Belt. 1.1 million hectares in, in application, 40,000 in title. So we have three targets ready to drill. We have uh, Binata North, South, and Escarpe. Binata North and Binata South have the drill permit ready. We were drilling Binata North when the, when the COVID hit us there. It never hit us there really when we, the, the whole country. We never have any problem. We, we closed the project and we finished 5,000 meters of drilling. We are just now probably going to go back to the field and then we need to basically finish logging the core that we didn't finish logging and replan the follow up drilling in Binata that we need to drill Binata and Binata North because they are by themselves at very good targets with a great footprint in a nice jurisdiction. And we have a hundred anomalies that we produce with extreme sediments and prospecting in the 1.1 million hectares. And we need to do follow up because we're 100% sure that we will produce more drill targets. And this is a pipeline. We go to El Fierro first, finish the job in Don Julio to get the targets ready to drill, go back to Vinata, north and south and drill those projects and then has more projects to drill in, uh, in, in the package. In one of those, we want to have a discovery. As soon as we have a discovery, we are going to concentrate our drilling to create a property that is the, the solid creation of value for us. There's a lot of things to do, but we are, we are a very organized group. We know how to run big programs. We work with big companies like PHP and Anglo Gold, and we are no, it's no unusual for us to deal with big exploration programs. Fantastic. Um, now on to some corporate questions. Why is Sable undertaking the private placement that was announced this morning at this time? This is, you know, it's a good question. I am so glad that this webinar was combined with this, uh, with, the, with the fact that we are in, the, in this uh, private placement. 
because basically we have been thinking about it and uh, we have been uh, thinking because the opportunity, the market is presenting a very unique opportunity in this moment that we don't know and nobody knows how much it's going to last. We don't know the behavior of the market. So we have the option to get real money that we put it in the bank and then we can for sure know that we have the money to go and perform the work that we have to do. All, we have the tenement, we have the package, we have all the opportunity for discovery, but with no money, we are nothing. Uh, so this money is the only guarantee that we can have that. And that, yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, the, 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 the final offer came. We, were, we, were, we have been working for 24 hours nonstop until this moment to close, to, to advance this deal. And we decided that it was, it was good for everybody to get the money to finish the job. And because only having discovery and having the drills, the multiple drill, drill, drilling, drilling machine working is the only way that we can have discoveries. And having discoveries, nobody will care about the illusion because we are going to really create big value for this company. I want to also add that we talked to shareholders before about before this market, we knew that we didn't know the market, we, have, we, we were going to have access to money in the market like today. That we have access to some money from NSR, from Osisco. We also have some property that we probably can divest, like the Margarita, the discovery that we have in Mexico. And probably the NSR that we have, 1% in Talisker properties in, in, uh, in DC. But you know, all those, uh, those are wild cards. You know, until the money is not in the bank, we don't have it. And so when we put in the balance to take the money now or wait for the other things to happen, knowing all the work that we have to do and the money that we need to have. So we, 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 that's the reason we took this decision. And I hope, I hope that everybody appreciate that. It was no easy decision, but I think it's the best for everybody. Thanks, Ruben. Um, is management participating in the private placement? You know, up to the, you're, as you know, we just started this morning on this. I have uh, I've been told by the half of the management and board that they they are going to participate. I will know soon, probably by tomorrow, if the how what percentage of the management is going to participate and how much money they're going to put. But that's why that's all I know at this point. Hello? Sorry, sorry, Ruben. Do you think that the 5 million you're raising is enough to make a discovery to Alfiaro? Secondly, can investors participate or is the raise full? Uh, the 5 million, it will give us enough money to do the drilling in El Fierro in this moment. So we will know the size, there is no doubt there will be a, an economic or it will be mineralization of Fierro that will be very significant, let's put it like this, but the $5 million will give us enough money to know if we have what we are looking for for a real serious deposits here. If the book is closed, uh, can I, we, can we ask Jason that is managing the book in this moment, maybe he better to, to, to give us the answer on this one. Jason, can yeah, the, the 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 book is is oversubscribed and and it is it's currently full. And as for how much of the financing uh, management is taking, the president's list is around seven hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So Great. management participates in all financings and and buying the market. Um, like myself, I've put in over eighty thousand dollars in the last month in the market. Thank you. Yes. Um, there's a question regarding the silver price having changed drastically since the margarita discovery. Is Sable considering putting it into production or selling to consider considering its increase in value? Yeah, you know that, Diane, I also have a question in my head because when we discovered margarita, the prices went down to $12 per ounce. And even though, even that we, we, with the drilling that we did, we, we, we did a potential resource with the drilling, with the 5,000 meters that we did. We proved the vein for 1.5 kilometers. 
and in the first 100 meters from the surface. We haven't done much drilling below 100 meters. And we can see a very interesting resource on the first 100 meters at open pit of all at around 130, 40 grand uh, silver per ton. So it's very attractive. And also it's attractive to think about the potential below the 100 meters. We only put two holes that cut the vein, but with 70 grams. It's a different type of drilling that we need to do below 100 meters because we need to start proving more high grade underground material. So what I can tell you in this, prom in this moment is I promise you to have a good look on the economics on how, how uh, in between investing to do more drilling or the investing now. And I will take the best decision for shareholders. Okay, um, the last question is another corporate question actually, that Sable has had three CFOs in the last year. Can you elaborate? You know, yeah. The first one that we had was uh, Andrew, that Andrew was, he took another job in South Africa, he has to move. And so Richard, that is a person for, so for all the whole group is a, for the GDS group, uh, for private companies of GDS. So he moved and uh, Richard, that was a, a, also a CFO in another company with, with GDS, he retired and he took the, to the, the job with a temporary condition. He was not going to stay forever. We were very lucky really that Kelso, the current CFO, had been working and doing basically the job of CFO behind the other two guys, the two person and uh, for the last three years. So when I came to this job, I took the decision now to just basically ask Kelso to take the job because I know he will be for a long time with us. He's a young person with a lot of energy, good knowledge, and I'm sure that you will have a CFO in Kelso for a long, long time now. Okay, I have one last question. In your experience, is 10,000 G GMs per ton silver considered to be an elephant type of discovery? 10,000, uh, his means uh, 10,000 uh, gram per gram, gram per gram, gram, GMs. In Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. You know, yes. it's a sample, remember, that we took. But yes, it's not a, 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 a one sample doesn't make another discovery. We need to have geometry in 3Ds. We need to have something that's long and white and, and tonish. However, to have 10,000, more than 10,000, or over 10,000 grams for 10 kilos uh, of the silver per ton is no, is is one of the highest silver surface sample that has been reported in the last few years, probably in, uh, in mineral exploration. So although there's no uh, uh, a discovery or deposit yet, but we should be happy as a shareholder to get those kind of values on the surface, very unique values. Wonderful. I don't see any further questions. Does anybody else have any questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Ruben, do you have anything to, to close? Well, I would say, you know, it's a, it was our first webinar. I wanna go back and people understand a little bit of the story. I, I my case, Ruben Padilla, I took the job. I moved from BP of Exploration into CEO and President uh, in late February. It's everybody knows all the crisis we've been living. We are been happy, although we, we are not where we want to be yet, but we are moving with a very well design, defined uh, business plan and exploration program. And uh, I am glad to be happy to, to have this job. I am a significant shareholder in this company for many years now. Uh, I have an excellent team working with a small team, but an excellent team. We know how to do exploration. We, I have support the people who know how to run companies. And uh, with the right base of shareholders that I have and the good financing, the, all I can say is that we are in a good position to create value through discovery. And we will continue with webinars and my phone is always open to anybody who wanna call me and I am happy to chat with you guys. 
Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for participating.